Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we're going to talk about Clan Mulder, more specifically their possible faction mechanic. So without further ado, let's begin. Clan Mulder is the last remaining major Skaven clan which has not been implemented into the Total War Warhammer series as of yet. Like the other major Skaven clans, Clan Mulder is fairly unique, with its own standing armies mostly centered around monsters and mutants. This is not a clan that relies on stealth, machinery or poisons, but rather brute force. Now, it's only a matter of time until Clan Mulder gets introduced into the Total War Warhammer series. Many people indeed believe that they will be the antagonists for the upcoming Wood Elf DLC. Now, whether they are or not, one thing is for certain. The mechanics introduced with the Clan Mulder faction have to be fairly unique, at least only to the Skaven. Inspiration should be taken from the other clans, but a carbon copy in itself will only make it uninspired. Many people, myself included, have stated that they'd like to see a reimagining of Ikit Claw's workshop into a Clan Mulder aesthetic, where you would be able to use a generic resource only available for Clan Mulder, pair it with Skaven food, and upgrade all your Clan Mulder units permanently throughout the whole game. So for example, in a very similar sense that you can permanently buff up Doom Wheels, with Clan Scryer of course, now you could be able to do the exact same thing with Clan Mulder, but with Rat Ogres, Helpit Abominations, Wolf Rats if they get implemented, and so on. And in truth, this doesn't sound like a bad idea, however, copying Ikut's workshop outright would make it rather uninspired, and it does a bit of a disservice to both major clans. Instead, I believe that Clan Mulder's in-game mechanics should be presented as more or less the following. A new currency should be available to Clan Mulder. I'm not too clear on the name, maybe Warp Shards or something like that. This would be used in a similar way to the Greenskin Scrap system. With that, you'll be able to upgrade only Clan Mulder specific units. The upgrades could vary, extra armor, more damage, maybe even poison attacks, nothing too massive but enough to be noticeable. With this you would be able to tailor your armies to specific needs. Say for example magic resistance on rat ogres when fighting against demons, giving wolf rats should they be implemented poison attacks to be able to do more damage, maybe even fire resistance for the help at abomination. Each clan molder specific unit would have an option between two or three different upgrades. However, each unit would only be able to have one specific upgrade. I know things are looking rather samey at the moment, but bear with me. Now here is where things get a bit more unique. Upgrading the units will also work towards another mechanic. Very much inspired by Ikit's workshop, you'll have some progress bars which are linked to specific units. The more you upgrade your specific units, the more the progress bars will fill up. Each of the respective progress bars will unlock minor buffs for each of the respective units. Say for example, minor increase to damage to rat ogres, maybe some extra speed and so on. There should be around maybe 4 or 5 different levels of upgrades here. These would be permanent upgrades but nothing too out there. They're only there just to serve a purpose. When you finally complete one of the progress bars, a new unit will unlock to you, in a very similar sense to a pseudo regiment of renown. These would have all the benefits unlocked from the progress bar and all three upgrades available to the standard unit. Let's use Rat Ogres for an example. Let's say the three upgrades are increased speed, more damage and maybe regeneration. The minor buffs themselves would be an increase to damage, melee attack speed, maybe even just generalized speed, nothing too massive but just minor enough to be noticeable. Obviously I'm just listing basic examples here, if it comes into effect it will probably be with immune to psychology, maybe even unbreakable. So we'd now have access to a completely new Rat Ogre unit, we'll give it a generic name just so we can mention it a few times in this video, Black Plague Enhanced Rat Ogres sounds like a nice choice. This unit could either be released as a pseudo regiment of renown where you can recruit it every few turns or so, very similar to how the Empire recruits its provincial specific units, or as a normal recruitable unit which you can recruit as and when you need, however since it's so well buffed up, 
it would probably take a little longer to recruit than the standard one. Say for example, if generic rat ogres take two turns to recruit, then these black raged enhanced rat ogres would take, well, three or four turns. I'd say four in terms of balance as these monsters should also be subject to any turn time recruitment modifiers. I believe something like that could be fair, so they wouldn't be recruitable every single turn. Now, as Clan Mulder is very monster focused, the monsters themselves would be fairly cheap in terms of recruitment. I'm imagining that units from Clan Scryer, Pestilence and Eshin will also be much more expensive. And it would make sense that eventually you would want to recruit these units to your armies too, considering the fact that all monsters for an army would not work out too well, especially for sieges. It would make sense for Clan Mulder to have a sort of reputation system with the other major clans in an effort to reduce those costs. The idea is obviously taken from Clan Eshin, but in a different sense. But before that, I don't believe the upkeep of the unit should be the problem. Instead, I believe that it should be the actual recruitment cost, where it would be higher than most, say maybe 3 to 400% higher. By increasing your reputation with these other clans, then you can have it reduced. And even then, this should take a while to build up reputation. Now, reputations wouldn't be done in the same form as Clan Eshin. The clan contract system obviously works for the ninja rats because, well, they're spies. However, for Clan Mulder it should be done in a different sense. As stated before, Clan Mulder are known to create terrifying monstrosities, and these monstrosities are often sought out by other Skaven clans, and in some cases, the warlords of particular clans will request for their monsters to be altered in one way, shape or form. So let's think of it this way. Say every few turns you'll receive a contract from one of the other major Skaven clans. There they'll be requesting that you create maybe a rat ogre with increased speed, or a helped abomination with fire resistance, and you'll have around 5 turns to do so. It's up to you now to create one of those beings yourself, where you would recruit said rat ogre or helped abomination, and then use the currency which was stated earlier in this video to upgrade it to the specifics that the clan wants it to be. After which, you can select the beast on whatever army you decided to spawn it on, activate the mechanic and send it off to whatever clan requested it. After which you would receive your payment, which would be most likely money, food and a certain amount of reputation to work your way up a reputation bar with that particular clan. Selling to a particular clan should not however reduce reputation with another one. It made sense for Clan Eshin, but it doesn't for Clan Mulder. Clan Mulder have never really been for hire in a sense like Clan Eshin was, but they were willing to sell to any clan who proved to be the highest bidder essentially. Instead, the way reputation would be gained and lost would be completely dependent on fulfilling the contracts. The more you fulfill contracts with a particular clan, the higher your reputation with them. Each contract would get you closer and closer to another level of friendship with them in a sense. However, should you outright ignore the contracts, then what would happen there is every contract you ignore, you would lose a full level of friendship. For example, ignoring one contract from Clan Pestilence could punish you in a way that the reputation earned in two or three contracts, for example, would now be ignored. I think something like this would work fairly well. As you may have noticed, all three mechanics I've spoken about are actually fairly directly linked towards each other. This is because, obviously, the mechanics I've spoken about are already technically in-game in their own forms with other races and factions. However, by changing them ever so slightly in certain areas and then combining them to work together, you then get something completely new. You'd have to take into account that if you want to upgrade your own units, you will have to spend some of your unique resource. However, that unique resource also goes to working towards contracts and also works towards getting your unique recruitable units. Since essentially three different mechanics are tied to one specific currency, you would need to think long and hard as to what you actually want to do. This element of choice would be rather interesting, especially for the Skaven faction, to add a much needed boost of difficulty. 
Right now, they're probably one of the easiest races to play in Total War Warhammer, due to the fact that they have one of the most diverse rosters, and everything else is in a very good standing, such as technology and so on. But what do you guys think about these mechanics that I had in mind? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let me know if you think that their mechanics would play around differently. Let's have a little bit of a discussion, I'm rather curious to see what you guys think. But with that my friends we've come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.